Primal Chaos. Hey guys, Primal Chaos here. Welcome to the channel. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Enchroma Glasses. Enchroma makes corrective lenses and glasses for people with all kinds of color deficiencies. So if you're colorblind or you know someone who is, check out their website. And if you use the code CHAOS in checkout, C-H-A-O-S, you'll get 10% off. Tell them Primal Chaos sent you. All right, guys, today's video is going to be... Uh, uh, one from the Discord. So if you haven't joined the Discord yet, um, it's actually pretty quiet over there if you guys want to join. Um, just uh, click on the link in the description. When you get there, click on rules and you'll have to approve, accept the rules. And then you'll have access to the server where we can all chat. You can do recommendations and things for future videos. Um, and it's a great community over there. At least so far, there's not many people there, but we're only just starting. Um, again, this will evolve. And, and to be honest with you, if you're a fan of Discord, um, I'd love to hear some input on what we could put in there that, to make it a better experience and stuff like that as well. This one is a recommendation straight out of the Discord channel. Um, it's a band I'm not familiar with, but I did a little bit of digging and um, they're a, a Visual K band. Uh, that's K-E-I, Visual Kai, K. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm murdering that, but essentially what it is, it's an aesthetic. It's it's like a um, almost like how glam rock or emo was was a vibe. You know, you had styles androgyny, um, makeup, hair, all that sort of stuff. Um, and, and they've sort of taken that off in another direction there. Allegedly, it's less about the music. I think there's heaps of visual Kai bands that are in different genres, but it's it's more of the style of the performers and the, the way that they sort of project their image and stuff like that. Uh, but I guess there's probably a lot of like death growl, death core sort of stuff. Um coming out of that genre so this is one of them devil oof uh yeah let's let's have a listen i've got devil oof it's apparently it's a contraction of uh devil and proof so devil's proof so devil oof maybe anyway let's jump right in here we go new speak oh nice Okay. Okay, what? <laughs> Hang on. What? Was that an effect or was that an actual thing? So the goblin voice there from like, you know. That sounds inverted. It's like. Like a, like an inward singing thing. I wonder if that's the technique. I mean, it could be it could be digitally manipulated, like a whammy sort of thing. But I think the singer's performing those notes. I got no falsetto at the moment, so it's hard. But wow, man. Okay, hang on. Let's start again. I want to. <laughs> that shook me up too much. Here we go. Okay, so a lot of electronic sounds in there. Come on. I never know where to stop in these songs because I don't want to stop during a breakdown because everybody gets mad. Um, wow. So what I'm noticing particularly with the, with the musicianship is that it seems like everybody's there in service of the rhythm, right? So you've got obviously the drums just blasting out chaos and you've got the bass player and the guitar player who are just falling in line with that and following those rhythms or embellishing on those rhythms. And the only time you ever really hear them um, where it jumps out is when they're doing something specifically to get attention back to the, to the instrumental tracks uh, but it's not all the time. Like most of it's just that you can't even tell who's playing what, but then all of a sudden you'll hear the guitar player do like a little dissonant kind of run. Um, that's all pinch harmonics or they're, you know, a tapping run or whatever, or the bass you'll hear some sort of like specific um, pattern that leaps out from, from the backing track or the, the you know, the, the rhythm section of the band. Uh, and that's really interesting. Like it's uh, everybody knows their place. They know exactly what to put in and when, 
and they'd never overstep their bounds. Come on, listen to that. Jesus, that's a versatile vocalist. See what I mean? You know, that's you don't hear that anywhere else. It's only in those little solo parts. What's that playing now? Great use of stereo there, actually. That was cool. So, like, the bass is central. Guitar on the left. All on the left. And then it starts coming back in on the right and takes it over. And now we're in both. It was a weird call and response kind of. Oh, this is cool. Visuals. Oh, <laughs> that's how you lead into a breakdown. Come on. The caliber of those vocals, man, far out. It's a really good mix too. Interesting. Nice. <laughs> I love it when they just like cut it. You know, reminds me of uh, Pull Me Under from back in the day. You expect another bar or something and it's just not there. Um, that was intense. Wow, I did not expect that middle bit. That was kind of crazy. Um, you know, like you can, you've got a million options when you want to sort of lead into a breakdown, you know, and usually you'll get like either something quiet or you'll get something that, that lifts before it drops off. Um, in this case, they've just literally just chopped out like a Kurosawa film and dropped it in the middle. <laughs> and uh, that's just a real interesting choice. Um, but man, does it lend gravitas to the whole thing? You know, like this was, it almost looks like you're in like a... Um, one of those uh, dreams from inception or something like that, the way it's shot, the colors, um, the, 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 uh, color grading and stuff like that. It looks like, uh, you know, one of those movies like tenant or something, you know, very cool. Like a dream state sort of thing. Something's not quite right. Maybe it's the gray skies and no clouds sort of thing. I don't know, whatever it is. Um, yeah, but getting back to the music, look, that, that that's a punchy track. That is really intense. I think it's 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 obviously going to appeal to um, your deathcore sort of crowds and things like that because it doesn't have you know your traditional form. It's it's it sort of starts from the beginning note and it evolves until the song's over. And uh, you know, God, I admire that. I really do. I'm, I'm I'm still sort of one of those guys who tends to compose in you know verses and choruses and things like that. But this is just pure chaos, you know, in in, in the way that you know, but your bands like. Um, uh, Lorna Shore or you know uh well you know any any of those sort of metalcore deathcore sort of bands but there's something about Japanese culture that always makes things just feel a little bit more intense I don't know what it is there's just an energy there you know I love their aesthetic I love the way they look they're all unique characters I'm sure I read something about how they they pride themselves on their stage show being absolute mayhem and I think I'm going to have to check out a live performance if there's any on YouTube. It's really cool. 
but you know, whatever. That, look, that was a cool experience. I've heard a lot of metalcore and deathcore. As a lot of you know, it's not really my genre, but I'm doing my best. You know, it's it's not like and and the funny thing is, everything I've heard, I've really liked, but it's still not what drives me. Um, however, there's so much to 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 take away from them. Any any of the songs I've done, all the way from Parkway Drive, Bring Me the Horizon, anyone like all of the more sort of brutal deathcore bands I've done, all the way through to symphonic stuff, you know, um, that I wasn't familiar with. I, I'm just finding so much nuance in everything that I tend to find I want to sort of it impacts the way I create, you know, and that's that's always really interesting to see. Um, I mean, without even knowing what the song's about, I tried turning on captions, but they haven't got English captions. It's it, it doesn't even matter. It's just the energy it brings. It's that sort of passion and execution that you'll only really find, you know, in in the extremes of this genre as far as like quality musicianship and stuff like that. These guys are intense. They obviously know who they are. It almost feels like a band of session musicians that are, you know, session musicians tend to be, as a as a general rule, tend to be better quality musicians than your typical guy who joined a band and they got famous, right? And there's a reason for that. It's because they have to slot in and do it in one take and they have to play in any genre. And typically they can, you know, they understand uh, music theory typically, you know, better than your average guitar player or whatever because they need to be able to sight read and things like that sometimes, depending on the, the quality of the musician. But one thing Jap Japan is really, really, well, it seems to be known for is the ability to churn out world-class musicians and almost every band you hear has players in it that are just at least the ones that sort of make it across the, the, the harbor to the rest of the world. Um, they seem to be all world-class as far as their musicianship, their maturity as players, their ability to be there when they need to be and not there when they're not supposed to be there. Uh, their control is just, it's, it's just, uh, it's a whole other level. And I don't know what it is. I know that with idol culture, you end up with a lot of particularly female performers that are world-class by the time they hit their 20s because they've been playing since they were like seven, you know? And because of their culture of having brilliant musicianship at, at the medium to high level, that's what people aspire to. They don't aspire to be average, you know? Whereas depending on when you picked up a guitar through the 80s and 90s d depends on how you play years later you know whether you picked up the guitar during hair metal where guys like nuno Bettencourt and steve vai and satriani and malmstein were the idols you know it it makes you a completely different player than when you picked up a guitar during the grunge era and kurt cobain was the guy you know not necessarily better or worse just different um you know and then bands like say you say for example you were well into pearl jam there's a good chance that you're playing, whether you know it or not, is more probably inspired by Jimi Hendrix than you probably realize, you know? Um, whereas these guys seem to be capable of doing anything, you know? Anytime I see a six string bass, I'm like, okay, <laughs> shit's about to get real, <laughs> you know? So yeah, look, that was really interesting. Um, I'm a big fan of of the chaos um, and I'd love to hear more of these guys. I typically, I particularly want to see like something live. So I might jump back to these guys, depending on how successful this video is. Thanks again for the recommendation. I believe it was uh, Socrates1775 over there on the Discord chat. Um, yeah, but if you feel like I brightened your day at all, feel free to support the channel. Just buy me a coffee. Um, there's a link in the description. Or if you want, just hit the thanks button <laughs> under, the, under the video here. Um, that uh, it allows you to support creators without leaving the YouTube app. Uh, or, you know, like, share, follow, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. L look, thanks again, guys, for sticking around. And if, you know, I don't know how popular Devaloof is, but if you watch this, I really appreciate it because the, the videos that don't get the big numbers, you know, the 40,000 views and stuff like that, um, they still have a place on this channel. And I don't want to be the guy who only re reacts to stuff because it's going to get clicks. You know, this channel has always been about authenticity and truthfulness um, and honesty in my reactions and, and also trying to put in a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so... Yeah, it'd be really cool if uh, if you just let me know in the comments that you stuck around and check this one out. Now, aside from that, I forgot to mention up front, for the month of September, yeah, let's do September. 
Um, anybody who subscribes, or, or even if you're already subscribed, anybody who comments on the videos um, is uh, capable of winning this. It's a Blue Snowball microphone. It's awesome for people who want to do podcasting. It has different polar patterns. It's omnidirectional if you want to sit in the middle of a table and do a podcast. It's also, um, you know, directional. So it's perfect for a situation like this. You can stick it on a mic stand if you want to or have it on your desk. You can use it for streaming, YouTubing, whatever you want to do. But if you want to be creative, I want to help you do that. So I'm giving one of these away to um, a lucky viewer. Just jump in the comments and just tell me what you're going to do with it. And uh, I'll just pick somebody who seems like they have a, a good option or possibly even at random. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, so if you stuck around, there you go. Comment, leave a comment and, uh, you know, maybe check out some more videos. If the more comments you leave on videos where I'm advertising this competition, the more chances you've got. So thanks again, guys. And I'll catch you in the next one. Hey guys, this video was made possible by Enchroma. One in six guys and one in 200 women are colorblind. And if that happens to be you, there's something you can do about it. Click the link in the description. It'll take you to Enchroma's website where you can get a free eye test. And while you're there, maybe pick up some corrective lenses. They've got styles to suit everybody and a 60 day money back guarantee. So you got really nothing to lose. And while you're there, use the code chaos in checkout to get 10% off. Tell them Primal Chaos sent you.